All right, everybody, and what's happening? Tour Head Nordy here with you. Today is July 1st. The month just changed. Dead Tour's halfway over. Dead and Company Tour, I should say, is halfway over. Phil, his smaller tour, is uh, like five shows in, and like I said in my calendar that I put out um, with all of the Dead and Company Phil shows and Bobby shows for the whole summer um, that you can see on my channel, this is one of the times that the shows are overlapping again. So, tonight, I believe it's uh, Dead & Company in Bethel, New York, and Phil in Hartford, Connecticut. So, with that said, we're going to talk about and listen to this version of Phil, and we're going to kind of recap Phil's summer tour so far, because it's been pretty fantastic, and the Phil & Friends roster has really been diverse. Like, he's been pulling people from all kinds of places, and, you know, granted it's mainly been him and Graham and Stu, but not always. So, let's recap these last few shows that um, Phil has been doing, if we will. Um, I actually wrote down some notes so I can keep some of this shit straight, because I actually don't know some of these guys from the various bands they played in. But, let's back up. This is from Missoula. And this is this crazy They Love Each Other that has the sickest jam. So I'm going to turn it up a little more. And now we're going to talk about... Okay, so on 6-4, it was Frost, and it was Phil and Graham. But then they had Scott Metzger on guitar, another guy, John Schofield, on guitar, Ben Montench on keys, and then Joe Russo on drums and vocals. Sick lineup down at Frost. Now... They came up a little while later to Cuthbert in Eugene, which is right outside of Hudson Stadium. And that was on the 11th, and that was also the first day that, the first coinciding day of Den Company Tour and Phil's Tour. <coughs> and up at Cuthbert, it was uh, Phil, Graham, Stu, and then I don't know who the keyboard player was or who the drummer was, but it was a young drummer who was going off. Now, towards the end of this, I want to talk about um, uh, the fact that something's missing from this Cuthbert show, and we'll talk about it at the end, but um, at Mary Moore, um, which is up in Washington, I went down to Shoreline instead. My friends all went to see the fill up here at Mary Moore, and it was Phil, Graham, Stu, and then it was Steve Molitz and Tony Leone, and that's a whole different band and a whole different set of friends. Now, Missoula, whoa, on 617, holy shit. Okay, Phil, Graham, Stu, John Molo, Phil's friend who sits in the drum seat most often is back on the skins, and now Holly Bowling is on keys, ripping it up. This is her right here. Listen to this. It's fierce, 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 fierce. Such a great jam. All right. Listen to the crowd reacting to her. <laughs> and now the jam keeps going. Here comes Phil. All right, so they jump up to 619, which is, if, as far as I know, the last gig on Phil's uh, tour, unless he played a little festival somewhere that I wasn't aware of. And that was up in Telluride, the highest concert in the country. Um, and that was Phil. Graham, Stu, John Molo back again, Holly Bowling on keys, and then they had Bella Fleck sitting out on banjo, they had um, a guy named Sam Bush on mandolin, for the various songs they had a guy named Paul Hoffman on guitar, and they had a guy named Anders Beck on dobro, and they came in and sat in through various songs throughout the show, which was incredible. So, I just love how Phil's been mixing it up, like, it's been amazing, and like I said, the, the, the people who are filling in the Friends slots are all um, super top-notch. Man, that drummer in Eugene, younger cat, just firing it. It was just so, so good. So, anyway, we're listening to this is this killer jam jam. I love it. A little louder, even. Okay, so some of the songs they've been playing, in no particular order of any of the shows, were 
Blue Sky, Almond Brothers, like, ah, I think they opened this Missoula show with that. And um, really long, long West LA's, like, ripping deals, just shredding deals. Um, let's see, what else did I put down here? Oh, Mason's Children Openers, just like, just fire. Here comes Sunshine, Mason's Children, Here Comes Sunshine. Pretty good for your first two songs for the show. Like, can't beat that. Um, Unbroken Chain in Eugene was so fire. Like, 13 or 14 minutes long. Just just so fierce. Phil. Phil, Phil, Phil. A bunch of Phil stickers that I got from uh, my buddy um, Acidic Jew on um, Instagram. <laughs> um, let's see, what else? Golden Road. Fuck. Just so fierce. Let me see. What's this last one I wrote down? I think this is the either the last bunch of songs from Missoula or from Telluride. But it's and this is one long combination. Music never stopped. Other one. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Stella Blue going down the road. All one big long continuous jam. Phil lighting it up all summer. Like. I saw both Shoreline shows with Dead & Company, I'm hyped on that too, but Phil this year is just, just tearing it apart, and I'm so, so stoked, so <clears throat> I'm glad we got to talk about this a little bit today. Now, what I wanted to say was, the Eugene show, we have not been able to find a tape. No GNU is a good GNU, and go to his channel, No GNU is a good GNU, um, on YouTube, has been looking for this tape, and he can find everything. And I've been checking with every single head I know, and it was raining in Eugene, and there is no tape from the show that we can find, not even a soundboard. If you know about it, let us know, because we want to put it up, because it's such a fabulous show, but all we have is little video clips from inside the show, and that's never going to do. We want a nice, clean soundboard. So, um, and another thing about Phil, and I'm going to ask Big Steve the next time I talk to him on the show. He said Phil took a dose at every single show he ever played. I heard him briefly saying it to somebody else in one of the questions on his Sirius XM Big Steve Hour on the Grateful Dead channel. I'm going to ask him that next time. I've read Phil's book. I don't remember that being in there, but to dose at every single Dead show that ever that you ever played in, that's pretty phenomenal. phil nominal. <laughs> so anyway, let's wrap this up. Listen to the rest of this. The Phil recap for the summer. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Holly Bowling on keys. Straight through the roof. Can't fade it. She rips. I had no idea who she was. Found out today when I looked her up online. Incredibly talented keyboard player who can play everything and does the dead. Beautiful, beautiful justice. All right. Cheers. Oh yeah, I'm not seeing shows right now and I sold a bunch of my tickets because I'm still dealing with the book. To her head, I was an acid fuel teenage dead feed. Still going through the last phases of final publication process. It's a pain in the ass process, but it's going to be worth it in the end. And missing for shows to put out my book is a dream I never thought I would dream, and I'm pretty damn stoked. So if you guys are out there seeing shows, enjoy it for me and enjoy it for everybody else who can't make it right now, especially if you're on the East Coast and we're on the West Coast. Have a good time and enjoy yourselves. It's what it's all about. It's what it's always been about. Since 1965. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.